Um, so no matter your thoughts on technology, um, and you'll see what we mean when we come to do this session, because the technology is not working for us today, um, you can't deny it forms a massive, massive part of our lives. Um, and it's becoming increasingly so with members of our community. Uh, our latest survey showed an upsurge of 21% of respondents uh, making use of um, Alexa-style smart speakers um, or smart home devices, and 53% um, using smartphones and um, things with accessibility features. So that's a, ma a massive increase from our, our first survey. Uh, we also know that a good percentage of our community wants to know more about technology, which is why we've asked Davinda Kula from um, the RNIB Technology for Today's team, that's uh, right, Technology for Life team. Um, <laughs> I can be today if you, want. you can be today. Uh, and we also have some of his colleagues um, from the team in the exhibition hall. So if any of your technology needs, you can speak to Davinda or his colleagues um, who are in the room with us as well. Um, so for this next session, Davinda, come on DJ. up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Let's get ready to rumble! DJ, thank you. Mike Tess, can I, can I just gonna keep this all interactive? Can I get a single clap if you can hear me okay? Oh, you sound gorgeous. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm just for myself, a bit of an introduction. Uh, I'll try my best to speak slowly for the interpreters. Apologies, I do talk quickly. Tell me if it's too quick. Um, so, as Matt kindly said, friend of Retina UK and vice versa, feeling is mutual. Um, I have RP myself, so I've gone through the spectrum of sight loss. And I want to keep today's talk pretty interactive, uh, pretty light touch, but also really informative. So it's going to be a lot about principles, where we are with tech, the value it adds to our lives, and how it can move forward. Uh, Matt touched on a couple of great colleagues I've got in the room. Uh, first, uh, I've got my colleagues here who are Colin Shales and Dave Williams. And they'll also be talking at some point as well. And I've also got my uh, glamorous assistant who is an echo, but for this session is a techlo. <laughs> so, what we're going to start with was, I thought I'd frame this in a way for you to say, well, there's a lot of talk about, med we have talked about medical model, social model, I think a lot of people have heard these terms. And I like to think about it in this way that it's great, the medical stuff that's going on. It's, I'm one of these practical chaps that says, it's great what's happening in, the, in that side of the field, but what's happening with technology, what everyday life is about, is the skills and the adaptations and the changes we all need to do. To, to live and contribute and live good lives. That's what it's about. So the social model, if you've not come across it, just a quick overview, is an example I'll use away from sight loss. Let's imagine someone's had an injury. Let's say it's a spinal cord injury. I'm sure most of you know that once they've done their medical treatment, what's the first mobility aid somebody with no longer functional legs is given? Anyone want to shout out? Wheelchair. Wheelchair. Fantastic. Yeah. So that person is going out in the environment in their wheelchair happily getting around where they want to be and let's say one day they want to go to a library you know thirst for knowledge they get to that library and they're faced with a set of stairs it's at that point that they are disabled not because of them as an individual but the environment has got a barrier in front of them so if that's the barrier i'm a very problem solution kind of guy what's the solution exactly so someone's kindly said ramp now, what I'm going to talk about from a technology standpoint is we have a ramp as well, and that's our accessibility, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. In every situation of our lives, if you come across a barrier, think about what's my ramp, what's my solution? Because every one of us has an objective, you know, it could be anything, and, you know, we'll come across a situation where we think we're going to have to be creative. I'm sure all of you know this. We're pretty tenacious. I'm a stubborn guy. You know, we've got to get things done, right? So technology has become a real asset and a tool. I think Matt, Tina, Yese mentioned about, they seem to be more of a, an aid for us as well. It's like, I call my smartphone the Swiss Army knife of tools. It's as many tools and skills you've got in the box. So in terms of technology, it can be basic tech. I'm sure some of you may know about bump on stickers. You know, they could be a little bit of a tech. Uh, anyone use a liquid lever indicator? Give me a clap if you do. 
Well, okay, interesting. Not so many. Okay, so give me a clap if you do use a form of technology. So that's interesting. Okay, so that was a bit of a Mexican wave of a clap. That was. Um, so, and for those online, apologies, do clap as well, but I can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> So it's, it's one of those situations. It's tech has moved on so much, just like at some, for us, some of our site loss has moved on so much with progressive conditions. So I'm gonna talk about inclusive tech built in. And that's not to say that specialist solutions from some of the providers that we have out in the market, I totally respect what they do. But I'm sure some of you come across, maybe if you've had recent diagnosis, or if you've had site loss for a long time, or if you've been registered blind or born blind, all through that whole spectrum, there's going to be somebody that says, this is the best thing. This is the one you want. Don't go for that. Um, but the thing is, what I say to everyone I teach and train is what's right for you. Make sure you get hands on with what your objectives are. Be, be aware about what you want to achieve. And all of these tools have a ramp. So let's start with Microsoft. Just brief, we're going to do principles. First thing I'm going to do is frame it with this in mind. When I teach people, think in your mind of a triangle. And at the top is sight. And on the other corner is sound, and on the other corner is touch. Okay, all of those three senses, I'm not really going to be doing smell and taste. I don't think tech appreciates that, so <laughs> let, let's stick with those three. What about, so if we start to say a spectral sight, sight starts to get taken away, what are we left with? Sound and touch, yeah. So let's go with the sight, and what my tech clo is going to do, if uh, Maestro, you, if you could just confirm, is the Windows computer, there we go, the magical tech, it's there. This is a standard Windows desktop for most people, but when, for myself, as I was going for magnification, for example, is what I'm going to be talking about. That's my first ramp. I was thinking, <laughs> I cannot see that. But I'm not sure if some of you also know that there's one other thing that starts to affect a lot of people, and that is photophobia or glare. Give me a clap if you ever get sensitive to light. <laughs> okay. So, given that, now, Tecla, if we could, the first thing I would like to do as an adaptation to my glare issue is three keys, which is Alt, Shift, Print, Screen. And this isn't going to be a training session. Don't have to remember all this, but that's just so you're aware of what I'm doing. Alt, Shift, and Print, Screen should bring up, a, uh, it says an alert on the screen that says, do you want to do this? We confirm and say yes. For those that you can see the screen, what it's actually done is it's created a flat, matte, black background. And, and the icons, for me, stand out a lot better. Doesn't mean I can still read it, but it's definitely taken off just that extra bit of you know, light that I don't really want, because it leads to headaches and all that God, good stuff that comes with that, yeah? Again, all built in. The next thing I want to do, though, is I do want to read the screen. So what we're going to do is, again, free, built in on all Windows 10 and 11 systems, is do three keys. Oh, actually, no, no, sorry, I'm going to come back to that. We'll do the magnification is Windows key and plus on the number pad, or if you're using a laptop, above number nine, is, uh, just to the right of zero. Um, go for that. So let's do Windows Plus. Okay, how are we getting on? Right, so we're going to go slower so people don't get, yep. yeah. And if those of you can see the screen, now we're just using the mouse, and it, you, it, the whole magnification follows the mouse. Again, there are software solutions on the market we can pay for, but I think try the built-in stuff. Why not? It's free. Uh, I'm an Indian. I love a good you know, cost-effective solution. So, yeah. um, so here we go. In that respect, that's done. You know, we can basically make it as large or as small as you need. Now, if there's a Word document, for example, or if you want to press, for example, Windows key, the Start menu is now enlarged. And the great thing about that, whether you're a mouse user or a keyboard user, the focus will stay with you. Right? Great. So that's Windows as, a, as an example. But what I'm also going to do, just so they can hear it here as well, is also talk about a couple of other things, which is sometimes it gets to a point where just magnification gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then all you see is one word on a Word document at a time, for example. I've been there. And the next thing I know, if this sounds like something you've experienced, where you get eye strain, you've got headaches, your back starts to hurt, the next thing you know, you just need more breaks. So if, give me a clap if you get in that situation. Yeah, sounds... Yeah, sounds like we all have. Okay, and, and the only one who wins in that situation are the drug companies because you end up taking more painkillers. So we don't want to be doing that. So I would say the next solution is if we've got from that triangle from sight, and we're going to move over to sound. So what we're going to talk about is a built-in solution, which is on all systems. But I'm going to demonstrate Windows while I'm on it at the moment. 
is a screen reader. So for those that you don't know what a screen reader is, is what we have seen, if you've had some sight, the text is converted to speech. It, that's why it's called text to speech. And that way, what you're doing is, rather than relying on the sense, which is your eyes, which we've, as children we've relied on, we're now saying, well, why don't I just listen to it? You know, sit back, relax, posture's much better, and let's go with that. So what we're gonna do with the Windows solution is three keys. This is Control, Windows key, and enter on the keyboard. So, Tekla, let's give that a go. If not, I can do it from this one here. No, that's right. Should I do it from here? Yeah. Okay, exit, cool. Exit, exit, exit. Oh, I could do that. So, let's go for let's exit that. The one we'll do. So, Control, Windows. Settings. Set narrator heading level one. Welcome to narrator. This is narrator home, where you can get help access your settings, and learn about new features. Narrator is a screen reader that describes aloud what's on your screen, so you can use that information to navigate your device. To start or stop Narrator, press the Windows logo key and Control and Enter. Okay, you'll go on for a while. So, <laughs> all I've done is press Control and that's mute. So I'm gonna press a couple of keys. Now what's really important for any of you who start thinking about this as a, as a journey, because it is, it's a journey of adaptation, is there's two levels of learning, and I don't think it's spoken about enough. First learning, if you've come from a, a mouse background, which is fine, no issue, the way to drive this instrument, this, this tool, is to start thinking about the Windows inbuilt key commands, okay? And what I mean by that is, simple one, for example, is Windows and D for desktop. Serious accessible agent. So that means everything's closed. Sorry, I'm hitting your microphone. Uh, and all I've done there in one, well, two keystrokes has got to the desktop. And I'm, I'm not looking at the screen, I promise, for anyone who's not, I'm just gonna press the Windows key. Start window, search, search box, edit, type here to search. So the first thing we do is it comes to a search box. Now, what's beautiful about Windows is it's the entry point to any program, setting, or anything you want. So let's just say, for example, I wanna type on Microsoft Word, so I'll just type in Word. Key, suggestions available, Word, there you go. Press right to switch. So that's the first option. Hit enter. Pain. And I'm going to exit. Desktop. Right. And then I'm just going to do a little type to say. Uh, space. Oh, if it lets me do that, close you. You've got to love Windows when it does this. Taskbar pane. Start. But desktop list. No. Settings. Settings window. Start. Yeah. Key. Suggestions key. available. Oh, All tab item. One of four. Selected. Right. I'm going to. Apparently my Settings system doesn't window. want open words. Right, lovely, thanks word. Okay, so in essence, what should have happened is a document would have come up. I'm gonna to go to the desktop. Hit w, word, so. No item, word window, new, blank document, okay. one of three, selected. Okay. Scan off, page. There we go, so I'm just gonna say. Uh, space. And then, if it wants to read. Uh, cap H, page. page, I, space, hi. That's better. Now it's working. Took a little while, so. A, O, space, H, A, E, space, R, Y, O, U, space, U, L, so, space, O. That's it. And so if I wanted to get that read back, just press the key. Empty document. There's empty document, and I can just say. Page one, editable text. How are you? Should have read how are you? I really don't like live demonstrations. It never works. <laughs> all right, scrap all that. Edit it out, team. It works perfectly. I'll send you a video later. <laughs> but in essence, you get the principle. I don't, you shouldn't need to, nor does anyone need to, to do that. So, okay, we've talked about magnification and we've talked about screen readers. I'm going to talk about where we're going on to. Any questions from the audience? A couple of quick ones. If not, I'll move on to smartphones and tablets. Oh, speak now, forever hold your peace. Yeah, go for it, yeah. Good night, over there, that's great, thanks. No worries. I'm gonna keep the team fit, everyone, I love, love fitness, so everyone's gonna be running around, so. Um, I've never actually had a laptop for that very reason, because I've always been told that the um, internal voice on a laptop wasn't good but listening to that it would be basic for what i needed i sure. was always thought i had to use the other 
product yes which has got it already built in yeah. um so how easy is it for a total novice who doesn't even know how to use a keyboard right so it's a good question and you remember i said to you it's about and this is a, i'm going to move on to something uh, just demonstrate after it depends on your objectives as two things one to learn a keyboard there are programs such as azabat a z a b a t uh designed actually by a blind chap because he was jokingly called it blind as a bat <laughs> so that is a touch typing program that you know you can actually get if you know if you're online and the rnb we can we can discuss that too the question that and this is what i've really said to a lot of people we're, we're going to move on to smartphones and tablets this stuff is all now lifestyles it's what is it you want to do is it important for you to have a, a computer or is it important that the technology that follows you and this is going to make sense when i demonstrate smartphones and tablets because i use my phone probably 99 percent of the time and i use my laptop apart from work maybe the other one percent you know maybe if it's word processing or some maybe spreadsheets but the joy of flexibility when we think about technology is you've got accessories so you could get a wireless keyboard and run it with any bit of technology be it your laptop your smartphone or your tablet and as long as you've got that orientation with those keys then you're happy. Now, I'll give you an analogy. I love cars, yeah? I don't drive often. Well, on a track I do, but not in public. They don't know me. And uh, what it is, we had a real challenge with other companies. I'm sure colleagues work at this. You go to one manufacturer, you had one set of commands. You go to another one, you got another set of commands. So that's like I asking drivers in the room, here you go, there's one manufacturer. It's brake, and that's right, it's accelerate, brake, and clutch, right to left. Then you get in another manufacturer's car, it's accelerate on the left, clutch in the middle, brake on the right. Every time you get into a different manufacturer, your brain has to think, ah, what do I do here and which one is it? So the joy for us is we've got the choice is all companies, barring one, I won't name and shame, but the, the majority have agreed. Look, why do we need to have all these convoluted keyboard commands? Just use one set of commands that work. So for example, if you know Windows keys, like I just mentioned, Windows and D, they're all online. I appreciate a lot of people is digitally excluded, but talk to us, you know, the teams here. Once you've got online, you're in the arena, basically. You're there playing the game of getting information. You can upskill yourself. And then it's really great because let's say you went onto Google, for example, then the narrator or the other systems such as VoiceOver and TalkBack, let's take just this one. All you do is you press B for a button, E for an edit field to search, you know, L for a link. And you know what, once you get it, we beat sighted people, I promise you. you know, once you get confident with it, it's really intuitive, but it does start with that foundation of get your Windows keyboard commands, because that works for every keyboard on the market. That's a QWERTY keyboard. So I can't answer how long it takes because you're a unique individual, but it might take you a week, it might take you a month, but that's the joy of it. Once you get it, it stays with it, it's transferable. Yeah, cool. Any other questions before I go into smartphones and tablets? Yeah. I'm just in the process of actually going back to work in a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and they want me to use um, their laptop. Uh, my question is, I know you're going to ask about smart tablets. Mm -hmm. Can I use window packages on an iPad in the interim before I get a support worker? And I've got a Windows keyboard, yeah. and I'm doing all the gestures, and I'm making a right <laughs> theory out of it. So, And sure. I, can, I used to touch type, so... Yeah, help, okay. please. Yeah, no worries. Well, I would say a simple answer would be some yes, not all. Some packages are specialist. And Apple, they're great, but they're also a bit of a, a specific way they, they're designed their packages, so some won't work. I would say your specific support at RNIB, we do have employment support. Give us a call, because it's going to take a little bit more time than I've probably got on the stage to actually answer that. But I think that's a conversation we should take away from here. And... I'm sure colleagues will echo this, uh, that it's one of those things that once we know what you're using in the environment you're using it, we'll make sure that that setting is, is sorted so that you don't have a barrier. So it's not an issue. But yeah, come back to us, give us a call, and we'll talk about that in more detail. Right. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Um, I've seen uh, this kind of um, software here or with the... Um, other one called Dolphin. Okay. Uh, apply to every every time to Windows-based software. Yeah. But my question is, um, 
why is Mac software always kind of out of the conversation? Is it because it's not inclusive enough or okay. it's because it has other features, it's harder? Okay. Uh, what do you think about that? A couple of different principles and reasons. Okay, so the statistics show that majority of blind and partial sighted people use iOS, which is Apple's smartphones and tablets. From a desktop or laptop perspective, it's the reverse for two reasons. Education and employment still use Windows predominantly. So most people who have experience with a system will use that because that's what normally helps them to go into that next level. So for example, if you're gonna go into an employer, that's where the level of skill, knowledge goes. Now Mac isn't a bad system, but in itself is more complex, uh, especially compared to it. Think of it like, a let's think of it like a, this ground floor, okay? Windows is one layer, one level. And then when you open the program, it's still one level, it's ground access. You just go through each, you know, you go from seat to table to drink, it's all on one level. Mac, in the wondrous, fan, lovely way they design stuff and it's all brilliant, is it's an interaction level. So what that means is your chairs are on one level. Then to interact with, say, a table, you have to go down into it. So that's like stepping down into another level. And then you step back into that level. So then the problem with that is people have to have another level of understanding of not just the environment, but the depth of where things are. So for that reason, from a speed screen reader perspective, it's a little bit less efficient and effective than Windows. From a magnification perspective, it's all even. Both have magnification. So it all depends on your need. Does that help answer? And explain? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But um, I, I agree that simplicity is key. For yeah. this. As, as simple as it can be, yeah. the better. Cool. But isn't uh, AI kind of something that also can help make things easier in the kind of the way you relate with the technology? For instance, voice command and that kind of things, like okay. talking to your computer and making it do things for you. Like, I, I know it sounds kind of sci fi, but we're getting there, you know? So, <laughs> okay. That's, that's, I knew that question was going to come up. Everyone's like, what about AI? I always say to people, think of AI as an infant. It's only about four or five years old. The thing is, expectations in the room, always people say to me, can we just not talk to the stuff? So the first thing I always say to people is, unless you know your environment and you know what you want to instruct that device to do, dictation's great. You can be in a Word document, you could be in a text message and be like, um, you know, hi everyone, loving the conference, really great questions. But imagine you're out and about. I'm just going to give you a lifestyle experience. I use my phone with the same principle as technology. If I only learnt it by dictating and vocal instruction, do you think I want to send my bank account out loud with the PIN number? Okay, so let's flip that on its head for a second, because a lot of people say this to me often, so Devinda, can I just talk to you? I say, it's an option. It's the cherry on the cake, but it's not the cake. The thing that it should be thought about is, and I'll give you an example, whether it's a keyboard or your hands or the touchscreen. True story, I was on a train, had my guide dog who, bless him, retired last year. Last year? Last week. Gosh. And uh, he was with me. We're just, I think obviously people love dogs, right? And my phone was out on the table. I'm typing away, doing some bits. It's a completely black screen. Now, the gentleman goes, what, mate? You know your screen ain't working over there, bruv? And I'm like, uh, I'm like, uh, yeah, that's no, right, mate. It's good, it's good. But why are you looking at my phone? So human curiosity was that I was actually doing my banking with my headphones in, which are wireless a wireless keyboard, and it was spoken to me. I'm actually safer doing my banking than sighted people. Yes, take that. <laughs> I've got to take the victory where you can, right? So what I'm trying to say to you is, it's about a big picture understanding of what's the right tool for the situation you're in. Because if you only learn that one route, you restrict yourself. Whereas I'm about, what's the weakest link in the chain? Let's make that a strength. Because if you learn all these, how many tools have you got in your toolkit? If you said, it's like, I think, I think, well, maybe in Denise yesterday said something like, you know, sometimes you need a screwdriver, sometimes you need a hammer. You know, I don't recommend that with the tech because it's probably a bit dodgy. <laughs> but in essence, it's true. Every tool or every principle or every skill you learn as an individual based on your objective, you know, makes, makes a difference. And it's no difference to whether the barrier could be, for example, let's have another clap. I haven't had a clap in a while. But who in the room, has a situation where they've got a letter and you've struggled to read it. Let's have a clap if that's the case. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and how many of us have maybe gone into the kitchen 
and a family, a friend, or somebody's moved something, and you don't know where it is. Yeah, a little clap for that one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and all of these things are principles of a couple of things, not just tech, but communication and familiarity. Now, why Apple is so key in while people, some will say they don't like the fact that it's locked down. But the analogy I always use to people I teach is this. Would you, can I get a clap if you know your kitchen well? Yeah? Some of you need to start cooking more. That wasn't loud enough. But. <laughs> right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that you know your kitchen. Now, you might know that through looking at the kitchen, partially sighted, or like myself, you might go in and be hands-on and using that touch in that triangle I mentioned. Right, so if you know your kitchen, and I come to your home or you come to my home and I say, guys, make me a tea or coffee, what do you think you'll need to do? I would say me and yourselves will share something. We'll have a, a, a spot of time to learn that environment, map it out in our minds. Would you agree? If you agree, give me a clap. All right, we're on the same page. Beautiful, beautiful. So the difference is systems such as Android, and I'm not criticizing them, they're what we call open source. Every company wants to use them. So when Google makes something, Google will make it look and feel like Google. When Samsung does it, Samsung will change it to make it look and feel like Samsung. Then say LG pops up and they'll be like, hey, we want it to look and feel like LG. So every time you pick up a new device, doesn't mean we can't use it because of this technology, it works. But what happens is you, your kitchen is now someone else's kitchen and you have to spend that time to map it. Whereas Apple, if me and colleagues are using Apple devices or me and you are using devices, the moment you know the principles of how to use it with a screen reader or magnification, guess what? All of our kitchens are one kitchen. So it doesn't take any or not a lot of effort for you to pick up another device off the shelf, another device off a family and friend and be like, bang, I'm straight there. Again, it's what I call considerations. People talk too much about the right and wrong thing. I'm saying it's a consideration. What is important to you? Because the tech has to fit your lifestyle. It has to add value to your life. I also will say a barrier, you know, we talked about ramps, barrier could be finance. So another thing people often say to me, I wasn't sure if it's going to come up as a question, is, but Android's cheaper and our Apple's well expensive. Well, I'll say to people this, I'll say, that's a fair point, but I've got clients who bought a hundred pound device, just got frustrated, put it in a drawer, and then I've had people who bought a 400 pound Apple device, it's changed their life. For me, a hundred pounds and never using it in a piece of dust, or a, or a bookshelf that item is more painful than 400 pounds or something that gives you joy and quality to your life. Would you give me a clap if you agree? And there are solutions. There's grants. There's way of you know getting around that barrier from technology every day. One thing we haven't talked about because we talked about the hard skills is how are we going to get the device? So we work both from RNIB. We have a grant system which our eligibility is online. But we also work with fantastic organizations, uh, an individual I mentioned, for example, Cambridge. Uh, if you're interested, do type in and I'll send the details out on the notes, but it's individual, uh, uh, independent technology solutions org, which is I India T Tango S Sierra V Victor I India P Papa. It's VIP.org. And they do loans, and, but they, the only difference I'll say is all of these solutions do require that you've spoken to a professional. So not me, because I don't know nothing. So anyone else, my colleagues in the room, talk to them. Uh, but basically what it is, if you've spoken to a professional, could it be one of our team? It could be a rehab, a techlo, you know, any of these, I'm, I'm generally echoing, they're all great. So you do need to speak to somebody who will give you the best guidance to say, have you considered these angles and these things? And is it gonna be suitable? And then we'll make a referral based on that. So if that's a barrier, I'm just here to tell you that from an acquiring technology perspective, this, there is solutions, okay? And then that's when all this good stuff happens. Okay, um, team at the back, any questions online? How are we doing? Move on. Okay, we good, move on. Right, so what I'll do, I'm gonna ask my demo cam to kick in, if, if you wouldn't make mind. So, uh, let's, I'm gonna do that. Okay, can I grab the tablet? Are you happy to run or do you want me to? Right, so what we've got, because the, the technology didn't quite let us display this on screen and for you at home at Zoom, what we're gonna try and do is we've got a demo cam. We're gonna try and feed this in. So um, 
I'm hoping what you'll see is a live shot on screen, which is our interactions with a tablet. Now, what we're going to demonstrate, I mentioned Windows, and now this is another smartphone tablet. Touchscreen can be a little bit scary. Uh, some people say to me all the time, oh, actually, do you know what? I'm familiar with the button. Yeah, that tactile touch is beautiful. But a, a flat glass can be scary. Okay, so here's another barrier. Tell me, or have a well, wave clap, has change felt scary at any point for your life? Yeah? Okay. Now, there's a really simple thing I say to people. Those who are successful are those that adapt to change. So if you adapt to change by learning these skills through our support and guidance uh, nationally we're all here, you'll get far. So why does that mean what, what's going on with this device? Well, with a simple gesture, and this has already been switched on, but a three finger double tap. Now what should happen on screen is it should enlarge. Now, if it hasn't, do you want me to give it a go? Yeah, okay. Now, for those who can see the screen, I'm just going to describe that this, with a finger gesture, a three-finger double tap, you can now interact and move the screen in the direction you wish to go. If you want to adjust the magnification, you can do as well, because, of course, it's not the same for everyone. What you do is a three-finger double tap and hold the screen, and you just slide up for more magnification, and you will slide down for less. So, again, really personal to you. Again, just depends on what you want to do. But as I mentioned before, with this, with this whole sight thing. Do you really want to be on a train in your home? Is it gonna hurt your posture? Is this the right solution? Just a question to ask yourselves, yeah? But it's there. So, you know, we could open things. And again, I've added the same high contrast to Windows. So for example, if we found settings on the screen, those that will see the screen will also notice that it's white text on a black background. So again, it takes the glare away. All these are universal principles. The barriers are getting over to take out of the equation. What I'm also going to demonstrate, and this one I'll probably do with my phone, just be a little bit easier, is the screen reader. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will grab my little trusty dongle. And then if demo cam follows me in a second. So there we go. Here's one I prepared earlier. No blue beat badge. Sorry, guys. So, right, let's hopefully hear. Apple folder, 10 apps, right. 20 new do. items. Is That's the screen reader on a, This is now an iPhone. Now, of course, I'm saying the universal principles apply to all. So, for example, if I wanted to go through the screen, unmuted. Just touch the screen on the Entertainment top. folder, accessibility apps folder, 11 apps. Apple folder, 10 apps. Business folder, eight apps. Communication folder, 11 apps. Beautiful. 94 new I So there we go. And it's as straightforward as touch, and you've learned the environment, because you now I know where things are. But there's also a gesture to do this, but I'm just gonna be mindful of time, so I'm not gonna go into a full train, but just to give you an idea that I'm definitely not needing to look at the screen, I can just relax, put my headphones in if I want privacy. And for those who are, you know, in terms of no sight. Edit speech off. Oh, we don't wanna do that. <laughs> Speech on. Now, that is total blindness, okay, on the spectrum. But future proofing us, because I'm all about future proofing. Entertainment for accessibility apps folder, 11 Apple folder, 10 apps, business folder, 8 apps, communication folder, 11 apps. It's the same information, yeah? And that's, to be fair, that's why I love technology. Because I don't live in hope with a cure. I hope it does happen, and I love them, respect all the work going on. I live in hope that every day I will stay strong enough and tenacious enough to learn a new skill that makes me better for today. And this stuff helps. Yeah. So let's uh, screen curtain off. Give you eyesight back, and I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of really powerful apps. And the reason I want to demonstrate a couple is just because some of you will have come across this, and some of you may not. So, um, in terms of a smartphone or tablet, this is where I think it overtakes the laptop or desktop. Because again, be mindful, it's got a camera, it's with you. So I'm going to go to my accessibility folder, which is top left. Accessibility apps folder, 11 apps. To open it, like a left click of a mouse, or just a double tap or a knock on the door, so tap, tap twice anywhere on the screen. So, that folder is now open. I'm gonna to flick to the right. Accessibility apps, error, be my eyes. That's one service I'd like to come back to. Blind square. Clue, Navi Lens, 
seeing AI. And that's the first app. Now we have heard of this and some people in the room may already use this, but what I'm gonna do is double tap it. Now, depending on how the connection goes in the room, this will be, now can I just get the- Do not file? disturb image status bar item. Okay. The black shoe on the white surface. Thank you very much. Now, what I've got here is I've got a flyer and I have no Channel. idea what it is. Short so, text, adjustable. I'm just gonna scan it, which is point. Go said, go said. 40 you said spring to 40 you said 40 oh, you said something else you well. said spring 2022 you said wanted to from retina on and managing with look okay. forward we did okay we and launched our innovative papio bullet di today we need your help today we need your help more than ever please donate today thank you so much for your support Please complete and post this form to Retina UK, Wharf House, Stratford Road, Buckingham, MK80 Night TD. You're welcome, Tina. Um, <laughs> so, um, again, really straightforward. Just if you're, it's your post, your letters, happy days. You've literally got independent skill in the, in the palm of your hands. You know, another service, but I'm mindful of time, probably won't be a demonstration, will be. Um, there's Be My Eyes, which is, you've got five million volunteers. Um, Tekla, could you grab my, in the very front zip, my pass? Uh, but I will show one innovation in a second. Um, so the Be My Eyes service, just to give you an idea, is sometimes, a, and this is an AI, it's an artificial intelligence we talked about. So it's, a, it's an entry one, but it's fantastic. And you've got the same on Android, if you're an Android user, it's called Google Lookout. Both of these services, both these apps are free. Okay, so again, that's something for anyone who wants to use that. But Be My Eyes uh, is 5 million volunteers who, but in essence, let's say, for example, you've got a piece of, I don't know, let's say something in the cupboards, but that this can't scan it. Pop it in front, you've got a pair of eyes. I've done it when I was on holiday, where currency or, you know, you go into a hotel or a conference and you can't find something. Fantastic service. So if you haven't used Be My Eyes, hopefully check it out. And an innovation I thought I'd mention to you that's happening at the moment, uh, just by way of clap, anyone heard of an application called NaviLens? A couple people. Okay, okay. So this is now going on to innovation. And I've got a colleague here, we can probably talk about other innovations as well, or see them at the stand or come across them at the stand uh, in the other room. NaviLens is like a barcode that you get on your supermarket uh, products. And, sorry? Yep. But this is different. It's actually got, it's, it's kind of, I would say, colors but large dots. Screen dimmed. Don't do that. And uh, <laughs> what happens, see, I'm arguing with my tech, it's worse. Um, so what it does is you, buy, you can actually do signage, you can label things. And in fact, Barcelona, where Javier designed it, actually is where they started to do it on bus stops, you get live bus times. Uh, London Euston has a, a, an actual test of this. So I'm gonna demonstrate it. What I will caveat is this. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate a video before we finish on wearables, because I wanna finish off with some wearables. But I'm gonna say that this tech is amazing, but still relies on us as blind and partially sighted people using our device in our hands. Now, how many of us want to be in a public environment with a very fantastically shiny, expensive device in front of us? I don't know about you, but I don't feel that comfortable doing it, yeah? So the barrier in this situation isn't that the innovation doesn't work, it's the application is via an accessory. So I'll talk about that more, but let me demonstrate it first. Error. So back to the beginning, gonna find Navi Lens. Be my eyes. Blind square clue, Navi lens. There it is, and I'll just do a double tap. Now, Tekla. Navi lens, point at a Navi lens side? code with the camera to read it. With the pass, please. Oh. So what I'm gonna do, so some audio description. Teclo is moving to the middle of the room as Teclo walks through, is gonna be holding a Navi lens code. Davinda is moving his camera. Okay, and I'll, I will do audio describe. So what I'm doing for the clock face individuals in the room, because I'm facing yourself, to my 12 o'clock, I'm starting from 10 o'clock, and I'm going right. So I'm now around my 11 o'clock, scanning the room with this code. It's good, the camera's running. It's going to about 12 o'clock. Now, if it's too far, it may not pick it up. So, because it's a small sub, what I'm gonna ask you to do then, uh, Tekla, come closer, because this isn't a big sign. So, now I'm gonna do it again. Now, it might be that the, I might have to move away from the lectern. So, I'm gonna try now the reverse. I'm gonna go from my, ten, uh, my two o'clock, scanning the room again, and I'm going to go, there we go. Six feet away, RNIB. 
Devinda Kali Technology for Life Coordinator. Judd Street. There we go. And that's my pass. So that's a pass where the code has been labeled. So had you a piece of tech, which I'll talk about a wearable or your phone, that could be disabled toilets. It could be signage for say um, a restaurant, or it could just be, for example, a sign at the bottom of the floor that says turn left for this exhibition room, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the forward innovation amongst others, just to give you an idea of how optics are coming in. Now I'm mindful of time because I know uh, we're going to do some question and answers. So I'm just going to do a final for you, DJ. Could you just do that video for me, please? And we'll go on to wearables and where we're moving forward to. And thanks, Demo Cam. Independence. The dictionary defines it as the ability to live your life without being helped or influenced by others. It could also mean the ability to discover a whole new recipe. Chicken and pumpkin soup. Soup ingredients. It could also mean submitting an assignment just before the deadline. It could be sharing a laugh with a colleague near the coffee machine. Looks like Alex from finance. To step out for some fresh air and roam the streets without any worry. Looks like a body of water running through a grassy field. Or just managing to catch that train during rush hour. 1541 Sprinter, Amsterdam Central, via Maria Hope. To be able to sort and read my own letter. Credit card statement, post box 289. To be able to pop quickly into my favorite local store. Mango chutney. It is to know that when I get stuck, I have people to call upon. Hey, yes, and where are you? Hey there, um, there seems to be a roadblock here. Can you help me out? I can help you out. Uh, do you want to use like a roadmap or something? Okay, wait, I'll share my location. All hands meeting. Tulip 3 meeting room. Tulip 3. To be surrounded by great people and be surprised by their love. Looks like a birthday cake with lit candles. To cook my favorite meal that my lovely family can't get enough of. To push my physical limits. To move, to jump, to punch and to feel alive. I wish you the happiest year ahead. To be me. To be Parham Dusta. To be me. To be Jesse Wienolds. To be me, to be Joy Barry. Introducing Envision Glasses, the new AI-powered smart glasses by Envision, empowering the blind and visually impaired to be more independent. Available for pre-order now. That's just one example. Others do exist. It's got to be independent. But it's amazing wearables are coming out. These are glasses based on the Google platform. And uh, again, it's just, I think it's an exciting time for us. We've got a lot of innovations coming along. A lot of companies are working on, uh, including great products like that. So I think for me, I'll stop and I'll put it back to you. And thanks for your time. <laughs> Any questions or anything? Or is, are we, Matt, are we okay for time? How do you? 10 minutes, so questions, back to the room, online, I'll open it up to, to anybody. What have you got on your feet? Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> totally forgot about that one. <laughs> Thanks for that. So what Matt's just kindly do, just reminded me of is I have got an A lady in the room. So I totally forgot about that. So maybe, thanks, Matt. Uh, uh, let me just see if she, but the thing is, she was being a bit temperamental. Right. Oh, hello there. Okay. Uh, you know this app that you just showed us, this Navi, Navi what? Navi yep. code, yeah. Is that a bit like a pen friend? It works on a very similar principle. Oh, the right. difference with a pen friend, though, is you will scan it with a device that is a specialist product. You label with audio voice what it is. Whereas with Navi Lens, it's labels that can be provided to you by the company. And you can do the same thing. You can label it. 
but what companies are trying to do. For example, RNIB works with Kellogg's, and uh, it's one of the products that they've tried to work with for a marketing perspective. Say, okay, if you want to find cereal, uh, you, you might want to use that. Now, again, I'm not. There are other brands that are out there, but it's just a test of innovation. Would this technology be suitable? And for some, it may. For some, it may not. But it's, if glasses and wearables or other things come into to the market, it is basically saying, well, how else could you get the information? And I obviously, I'm an advocate of Braille, and I'm going to bring a colleague into that briefly. Um, but I am an absolute advocate that other options exist. But this is just where we're going in terms of innovation. Um, if this doesn't work, which is highly likely, what I might just do is, because I think it's really important we do touch on Braille. I think Braille's not been talked about enough. Dave, could I lean on you to talk about some of the work that, for example, the Brainless Foundation and collaboration we do? Absolutely. Yeah, do you want to, could a mic come over to Dave? That'd be, be great. Hello, everybody. Uh, so we talk a lot about our toolbox. And if you remember Davinda's triangle um, of our sense of sight, our sense of hearing, and our sense of touch. And I believe that our sense of touch is very underutilized. And actually, you know, it's a very useful and important sense. And as a young man growing up, I didn't identify as a Braille user at all. I just felt that these big, bulky, heavy, beige books were just so far away from where I wanted to be. And actually, when I got into work, I realized that in order to free my ears to access the people and the environment around me, that actually Braille was a useful tool for uh, writing notes, for proofing documents, delivering presentations. But even more powerful than that was when I became a dad, I couldn't find any better way of sharing the bedtime story with my baby boy. So he is fully sighted. I don't hold that against him. It's not his fault. But me and his mum are blind, and of course we were able to get the wonderful uh, books from the Clear Vision Library um, that uh, they provide the print book with clear plastic pages in between those pages, so we were able to share the joy of the bedtime story together. And at that moment I had a bit of a, a, an epiphany where Braille was concerned that actually Braille wasn't something that separated me from other people, it meant that as a parent I could do more of the same things that other dads uh, and mums do um, across the world. So I became involved with a focus group um, who were working with a company down in Bristol and born out of that became what is now the Brailleists Foundation and we registered with the Charity Commission in early 2020 um, just before the lovely pandemic came along and said we weren't allowed to touch anything or go near anybody. So you can imagine obviously we had a little bit of an existential crisis but we moved our activities online like most people and uh, we have in the last three years delivered um, beginners courses for around 250 people who've managed to learn Braille remotely and I think that that's something that has been missing up until now is that sense of community. While we all find technology empowering, sometimes it can be isolating, but actually we can turn that around and we can use technology to bring us together because actually, you know, as blind and partially sighted people, we are a low incidence disability. You know, at RNIB, we talk about around 2 million people in the UK have some form of sight loss, but that's only one in 30, which means we're fairly thinly distributed throughout the um, population and those who identify uh, as being blind like myself um, and those who have an interest in Braille are much fewer. So through the Braillists Foundation, we have built a community of um, Braille expertise, people who are interested to learn more about Braille, how they can use Braille to complement other access methods. I used to work for Dolphin Computer Access, who um, developed the Supernova uh, software. And actually, in some parts of the world, magnification and Braille is a very powerful combination for people who just don't get on with synthetic speech and I know myself that if I'm on the train and I've got my headphones on there's a good chance I'm going to miss the sandwich trolley going past so I definitely don't want that to happen so um, I think it's important to have those tools in the toolbox don't rule anything out and even if braille is not your thing think of a jar of marmite when you put your hand in the cupboard 
uh, to find an item, when your hand reaches around the jar of Marmite, straight away you know if it's something you want or something you don't want, depending on how you feel about Marmite. And that's because the Marmite jar, I think, is an excellent example of really inclusive design that as soon as you touch it, you recognize that shape and you know about that shape. So let's celebrate our sense of touch. Now we're allowed to touch things again, which is wonderful. Uh, and of course, hand sanitizer at the ready if, uh, if that's what you need. But uh, yeah, do uh, check out braylists.org. And of course, myself and Colin Shales from the West Midlands Technology for Life team, we're going to be out um, in the exhibition area in the next room. And we'll be very happy to take any questions you have about r and be or the technology work that we do there. Yeah. Right. We've got a question online. Do we do if that's okay? Sure. And I'll just say one thing before we go to questions. Sure. As well in the exhibition centre, she wasn't working, the A lady. And uh, so I can say her name. So the smart speakers are a big advent in people's lives as well now. So I think what I'd also echo is that. Uh, forgive the pun. Uh, Amazon is next door too. Um, please do. You know, find out more about them. Things such as the great thing they do, just top level, is fantastic clock, just asking for time. Your information, the weather, and now even things such as not just entertainment of music, but our RNIB Talking Books Library is available there too. So the advent of smart speakers are really taking hold, and there's a lot of use cases for blind and partial sighted people. So I thought I'd just add that in the mix as more tools to our belt. But over to questions. Okay, so this is from online. As a partially sighted person who uses colour inversion and magnification on a smartphone, but my current Android phone is getting old. Can you speak about the comparison between Android, Android accessibility and iPhone? And how could I talk to someone about it, please? Okay, yeah. Again, I don't want to make it a versus thing. This is better than that. I'd say they both have their strengths. I would say please do give us a call at RNIB. Uh, if you don't know the number, I'll say it now, but also share it later. It's 0303-123-9999. Myself, colleagues, such as Colin in the room as well, we all will happily talk to you. We're either buying and partially sighted ourselves, uh, or we've got a, a wealth of knowledge in the team. Uh, it's, it's discussions like that that we love having because we've been there and we'll give you straightforward no, no jargon, uh, and it's all going to be about you. So please, let's, let's pick that conversation up, and please do give us a call. Any other questions? Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, I've worked for a long time um, in the entertainment industry from different sites. I worked for a while in media, then I worked with video games, and currently I'm uh, getting into the film industry here in the UK. Uh, and um, one experience I've had is that from uh, the side of the people that are making the technology, in the case of video games, for example, sometimes they don't even know how easy it is for them to adapt a couple of things on switching some things yeah. to make their video games, for example, accessible to people with uh, partial, uh, partially sighted like me, for instance. Sure. And sometimes it's just like, like you said, changing the back to make it dark and mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. and, and they are impressed when they do something like that and, and they can say they're inclusive making these switches. Uh, the same with the film industry. Uh, the latest movies that are coming with a lot of CGI and stuff like that mm -hmm. sometimes are very complex for someone that is trying to figure out what's going on and mm -hmm. maybe for them it's just trying to make, I don't know, less layers out of that and instantly you can know what's going on just like when you see a 2D old cartoon where it's just a super simple thing going on. Sure. So my question is, sure. how is RNIB uh, connecting with uh, industries just like the creative industries, like I mentioned, or rather, besides these things that are very important because they are day-to-day -day kind of things, like to get your life going, and it's amazing. You have to start from that. But we also want to be part of the conversation socially more uh, wider, you know, and be part of the movies, the video games, the podcast, whatever. Okay. So my question is, how is Aaron I B hooking up with the, the industries to let them know how they could be more inclusive and how we as uh, 
as the users of that can help you guys out to to point where where to go or what can we do Okay, cool. Well, I've been given the, I'm literally going to answer this quickly because we are short of time. I'm not going to keep you from lunch. Um, what it is, I'd say, and Dave will also probably echo this, there's a lot of work going on social media wise, and we're linking in with a lot of the studios for games, uh, including Audible Games. There are a lot of users on the form. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll find the exact information and how we'll get that out to, to attendees via the Retina UK team. And also we do a lot of work with audio description, working with Netflix, other providers, uh, vocalized and charity. So if you haven't used audio description on your media, use that too. But this, after the session, happy to pick up. I'm around, colleagues are around, we'll pick it up, no problem at all. So sorry if I had to be a short one on that one, but I am now out of time. Thank so you thank you guys, and enjoy your lunch. Huge, huge thank you, Davinda. Um, technology is always um, one of those really emotive subjects. You know, it's Apple, it's Android. We'll, uh, we will get ready to rumble <laughs> over lunch, um, which is now. Um, so lunch and the exhibition is in the room next door. So please do um, grab yourself a sandwich. So we have ham sandwiches, ham and tomato. Those are on the left-hand side of the room at the back. Uh, the vegetarian option is egg mayonnaise, which is on the right hand side. Anybody who asked for a specific um, dietary requirements, those are in the back of the room and your names are on the bags. For anybody with assistance dogs, if you would like one of the Retin UK team to take it for a spend, um, then just go and see one of the members of the team. So please be back promptly for um, 10 past two for the afternoon session. Thank you very much.